verify that their employees are legally eligible to work in the United States. Heat stroke, according to Dr. Crump, is to stay hydrated. That means drinking more of these, fewer of these, and avoiding alcohol. 23 horses, some with bones showing through their skin, are being confiscated by the Humane Society from their owner. Kelly Graham is with the Humane Society. But if we would have let them sit any longer, it could have been a situation where we'd have some really sick horses that probably may have not been able to be saved. The Humane Society says a neighbor complained that the horses looked emaciated. They sent it out an investigator, and this is what they found. No food and only one 15-gallon bucket containing water. I mean, we can tell just by looking at them that they haven't eaten in quite a while. Not so, claims the horse's owner, Hazel Trexler. These horses are well taken care of. I have been raising horses for 15 years, so I know a little bit about horses. Trexler claims she's purchased more than $1,200 feed for the horses. She also says she planted this field with rye grass for the animals. As to why some of them look so emaciated. We had five horses that just had babies. Are you familiar? Can I? They lose weight. These horses just had babies, so they will be putting their weights back on. And when we asked where her feed was, where is all of it? Can I ask you, what am I doing with the feed? Eating it myself? I don't know. I don't know what you're doing with it, but, you know, the Humane Society says you're not giving it to the horses. They are lying, and they will have to prove their day in court. If we would have found some evidence of her feeding these animals, it would, you know, possibly it could have been a different outcome. There wasn't any. For now, the horses will be taken to foster farms in the area for rehabilitation. Trexler says she's looking forward to setting the record straight. Hey, nothing's wrong with my horses, and I will have my day in court. The job of Lieutenant Governor is mainly a ceremonial position. His chief duty is to preside over the Senate, but if the Governor can't fulfill his duties, the Lieutenant Governor has to step in. Due to the way South Carolina's Constitution is set up, the Governor and Lieutenant Governor are elected individually, which means the offices may not be in lockstep politically. Governor Mark Sanford has pushed the idea of a single ticket since he's been in office. I mean, would it make any sense to have a president and a vice president elected with opposing agendas wanting to go in the opposite direction? I don't believe it would. Senator Larry Martin introduced a bill that would abolish the office altogether. Something very similar to what the state of Tennessee does and have a president of the Senate that would be uh, positioned to assume the position of governor in the event the governor cannot uh, complete his term. The current lieutenant governor, Andre Bauer, says putting the offices on the same ticket could lead to too much power being in the hands of one person. If the governor was able to appoint the lieutenant governor, then he or she has control over the upper chamber. That's because the duties of lieutenant governor include setting which legislation senators will take up and win. And Bauer, who's a candidate for governor, says when that happens, the common man loses out. What you see in those states where the governor picks the lieutenant governor, it's all money. The last time South Carolina had a governor and lieutenant governor elected from opposing parties was in 1998, when Democrat Jim Hodges was elected governor and Republican Bob Peeler got the lieutenant governor job. The from the State House, Drew Stewart, WIS News 10.